everyone and welcome back. This video will be an updated video to replace the old WAI one. I know it's been a little while since I said I would do that, but I got really caught up in school, so here it is finally. This script has been taken over and extremely modified by F3CUK with better code and more features. It's made mainly for Chinaris, but I've seen it used on other maps, so you'll have to check it out and see if it works for you. You can see down here the people who've worked on it. And just like last time, this video will consist of two parts. The first will be the install, which is really easy and simple, but the second will explain how to customize the script. This mission's install is ready to go without any customization, so if you don't plan to change things, you can do the first part of the video and be done. As always, you can come to this page through the link in the description of this video, and come over here to the right side to download the zip file. Once the file is downloaded, you can go ahead and copy it over to your desktop and, as always, extract it. When all of that is done, you need to open up the server and navigate to your server PBO. The first thing is we need to go into the server folder, into the add-ons, and open up our DAISY server. I'm using PBO Manager, and I'm going to extract to the DAISY server folder. If you don't have a PBO extractor, you can find that in the description of this video as well. Everything I'm using for this video, you can find in the description. Once you are in here, open up our extracted files that we downloaded. And you need to copy over the WAI folder into our DAISY server PBO. Now we need to open up the server monitor SQF. This is found inside the systems folder. Open up the server monitor here and go back to the GitHub page. Scroll down and you will see that on number five here, the first code block has allow connection. Copy that, use control F or another type of search for whatever word processor you're using paste in our search results and go ahead and find next. If you don't find it, there may be a space after the, uh, the semicolon there. So go ahead and delete the space and then try again. You can see that we now found it. You can also just use allow connection. I believe that will work as well. Yep, there is only one result for that. So directly above this, we want to paste this code here. So copy this code from the GitHub page and paste it above our allow connections equals true. Save that and close it. Now go back, go all the way back to where our PBO is. What you need to do now is set this as a backup. So I'm going to call it backup1 because I already have a backup. It doesn't really matter what you name it, as long as you just know that that's the backup files for your PBO. Now highlight your server folder there, and then go back to your PBO manager and pack it back into a .pbo file. So now we have our DAISY server PBO back. Now this is actually the conclusion for the install of the mod. It's ready to go. What you need to do now is test your server to see if it works before you do any edits. This is important because if there's an issue, you want to know that the issue came from the install and not from the modification. Changing something can often cause it to break if you do it incorrectly. So the best thing is to always test it first and then do the changes. So now, after testing, and you figured out that it works, and you're getting missions to spawn, go into the DAISY server folder again, and then go into WAI. 
Now we're going to go over the configurations for this. F3CUK and his cohorts have done some amazing edits to the system, and now the only file you really need to be concerned with is the config.sqf. So go ahead and open that up. You don't need to concern yourself with the debug mode. The blacklist is very important. This is for excluding specific areas for the mission spawn and the, dev and the AI itself. As you can see, it already has Starry Sabor from the Chinaris map, as well as the left top, the left and top out of bounds areas excluded. These are added by setting the world coordinates for the top left and bottom right of the area you wish to blacklist. If you're not using the Chinaris map, you may want to remove the Starry blacklist. So let's just say that you're using something like NAPF. Go ahead and just change this to false. Even if you are using Chinaris and you change it to false, you won't have an issue. I would just suggest if you are using Chinaris, keep it on. If you're not, just turn it off. Now on to the AI part. There are a huge amount of options, so I won't cover everything. I'll just cover some of the major ones. It's well documented and I've actually changed some of the documentation in it to make it easier to understand in some areas. AI clear body, this clears the AI of all gear immediately after death. AI clean dead bodies clears bodies away after the time period designated in AI cleanup time, which is right here. This time is set in seconds, so make sure that you do the conversion properly to minutes. The AI clean roadkill, this immediately removes all gear from any AI that is run over by a vehicle. This way if a player takes an armored vehicle into one of the missions and just decides to run over everything, they can get the stuff in the crates, but they can't get anything off of the AI because they didn't really do much for it. The AI roadkill damage weapon, this is a chance to whether or not it will destroy the weapon the AI is carrying if they're run over. And this is only a percentage chance, so this goes from 0 to 100%. The combat modes here are color based. I suggest leaving those alone. If you really want to change it, the modes are from lowest to highest threat. Blue never fires. Green is defensive fire only. White will engage at will yellow will fire at will, and red will engage and fire at will. So I, I suggest leaving it at yellow. If you really want to mess around with it, that's up to you, of course. The behaviors can be set to careless, safe, aware, combat, and stealth. Combat is the best for the AI, so I would really not change that. The AI share info and the share distance work together. This is whether or not the AI will send information to each other about your location, and this is the distance between which they will share your rough position with each other. These are pretty self-explanatory as to what they do. The skill sets here should really not be messed with unless you know what you are doing. The AI gear sets can be changed. This is what each one will be carrying. If you go to my GitHub and look up the custom loadouts, there is a website link at the bottom of the README that takes you to a web page that has all of the class names for the items in the game. The AI weapon sets don't really need to be modified. They're pretty well balanced and I would suggest keeping them the same. But if you want to, it's relatively easy to do that as well. All you need to do is, let's say we're going to add a new assault weapon you can just go ahead and add brackets. So if you want to modify this, you can just add a bracket, a quotation, the gun name, so let's say we're doing the M16A4, and then the ammo that it uses, which is the same as the ACOG M16. So that's the static rounds. And then you close that, and then, of course, you need to keep a comma separating each individual one. Now an M16A4 can be used in the AI Assault Weapons class. 
This here will add the skin from the AI to their inventory. This is good if you don't have take clothes. If you do have take clothes, I would suggest just changing this to false. Now, here's the part that most of you will probably be concerned with, the WAI missions configurations. And now we will go down here and you can see the different types of missions. This system has multiple mission types, such as missions for heroes, missions for bandits, and just your normal standard missions. This is to fix the problem with the humanity, where if bandits went and killed the AI at a mission, they would start to gain humanity for killing bandit AI. This isn't something that they would want to do if they want to stay a bandit. So now there are designated missions for it. Now, let's say that we want certain missions to spawn more than others. And let's say that we're tired of only having a few IKEA missions every now and then, which of course are the building supplies. These numbers here are what dictate the chance of which one will spawn. These must add up to 100. If they don't, things will be messed up. So if you add to one category, you need to take from another. Let's say that we don't want so many destroyed Urals, and we're going to take from that. So what number do we want the IKEA convoy to be at? Let's say we want it to have a percent chance of 10 instead of 8. Well, that means we need to take 2 from another area. We're just going to go ahead and take it from the destroyed Ural. So we need to lower that to 16. Go ahead and pull out your calculator from your computer if you need to, to check those numbers and make sure they add up to 100. Each section needs to add up to 100, so this should be 100, and then these should add up to 100. They are separate, not together. Now if you look down here, you can see that there are different arrays of what vehicles can be added for this. If you want to add more, as always, you can find the class name. Just put a comma, and then put the name in quotes. So that's where you would put the class name. And of course that would add a new item to the armed chopper. These here are the crate items. Again, just look up the class name on Google or you can use the web link that is located inside of my GitHub for the custom loadout script. For at some of these you can see have a, another array inside of it. These work in such a way where this is the class name for the item and this is the amount to add. So if we wanted more Cinder Garage kits, we could easily just do the same here. Put a bracket, come over to the side here, put a comma, and we'll put a number. Let's say we want 10 kits, and then put a closing bracket. Now we will have 10 Cinder Garage kits in there instead of just one. That's pretty much it for the actual configuration. Everything else is already explained through the comments in here. You just read those and decide what you want to change. Like I said before, none of this is required. It's already good to go. It just depends on your personal preferences and what you may want to edit yourself. Just remember that when you're done with all of your edits, that you save your file, and then go back to your server folder, create a backup of your old PBO, And then, of course, repack your files into a PBO. You can test your server and see how all of your changes came out. If it's not working, then you know that you messed up during the configuration changes, and you need to go back and fix that or just revert to your backup. Again, this is an updated version of WAI that's been set up by F3C UK, and it works way better than the old I'm hosting. I will be marking that video as outdated so that you will know which one to use. There will also be a link to this one from inside that video. Below you can see that there are two other videos. These are new that are accompanying this video as well. They are for a safe zone script. The safe zone has the safe zone works for both vehicles and players, so you don't have to worry about someone shooting your vehicle from outside of the safe zone. And there is a custom loadout script where you can set up a custom loadout for donators, admins, moderators, and your standard player. So thank you guys for watching. 
If you have any issues with this, let me know in the comments. I'll try to get to as many of you as possible. If I don't respond to you, it is because of one of two reasons. Either I lost your comment somewhere, which does happen because these comments get very long, or I'm unable to reply because of your Google Plus settings. So if I don't get a reply to you within a week, go ahead and post it again to see if I can give you an answer. If I still don't, then that means your Google Plus settings don't allow for people outside of your circle to comment on it. This is not something that I can change. I will be completely unable to comment on that until you change it yourself in your Google Plus settings. I have a lot of people asking questions that I simply cannot respond to because of their settings. Again though, thank you guys for watching and supporting this channel. I really appreciate all of your support. And I hope this worked out well for you. I'll see you guys in the next video.